Forster bits are expensive. Even the cheap ones I get. And I've always found that not only do they dull pretty quickly in use, but they generally come from the factory fairly dull from the get-go. So being able to sharpen a Forstner bit is incredibly important if you want to get good long life out of them and get nice clean hollows. So today, let me show you how I've sharpened my Forstner bits. First step is to get all that crud off of them, all the sap or anything you've got on it. I've just got a lot of dust right now. Next we want to analyze the parts and if you look at any blade, what most of us do is we will flatten the entire back of a chisel or a hand plane and that will be the last time we touch the back except for when we are just removing the burr. Most of our sharpening happens on the bevel for the simple reason it's a lot easier to remove a little metal on the bevel than remove a lot of metal off the back of the plane or the chisel. So let's see what we can do here. So let's look what we have here in this Forstner bit. Obviously I have the outside which is the diameter and we don't want to touch that one. Even a little bit might bring it in. Then we have these outside teeth and you can see a little shiny spot on the top of each one of those. That tells me quite frankly that this thing is way dull because you shouldn't see uh, two intersections coming together because that is the definition of sharp. These right here, their only job is to sever the fibers on cross grain, cross grain stuff. Without those, whenever you planed it, you would get a lot of tear out on the outside. And these are just like a hand planes or chisels. Their main job, they cut great going with the grain, but coming across grain, again, they tear out without having the fibers severed to begin with. So we basically have two different types of teeth, a cross cutting saw, and a rip saw. So how do we sharpen those? Well we have a little bevel on the inside and then we have the plain blade on the outside. So all we really need to do is focus on these inner teeth right here and we need to grind them long enough so that the little shiny spots disappear. Now the first thing I like to do is color them. Pick a color other than black. I've got this kind of magenta right here and color all the teeth that you want to sharpen up. Everything you want to touch with your stones. And that way you don't forget anything. Because basically when you grind off all the color, you know you're ready to rock and roll. For this application, I'm a real big fan of these DMT little slip stones. You can buy them really inexpensively and they come in kind of a coarse, medium, fine setting. Uh, blue being coarse, medium, and then fine. And just like whenever you sharpen your chisels, you always start at the lower grits and work your way up to get rid of any burrs. Well, obviously I have a lot. It's quite, these, this forcing bit is quite dull. So I'm going to go through each one of the grits, starting with the blue. Now the key thing is, you want to somewhat match the direction that the tooth is already going. If you notice, these teeth, they're almost straight up and down. They're actually leaning a little bit forward, and they've got roughly a, you know, 35 degrees from the edge. So all I'm going to do is kind of try and match that same curve, and just give it a good push forward, and when I see all of the ink gone and the shiny spot on top also gone I'll move on from there and I just work my way around giving each tooth a little bit of attention now once I've made it all the way around I'm gonna come over and each one of these faces has a little bit of a bevel coming over here and I'm not really concerned about the sharpness on the outside I'm mainly concerned with that point right there so I'm just going to follow that angle and just give it a slight burr slight shaving and that just keeps that point really really sharp now that I've got all my teeth that are razor sharp, I mean they are kind of prickly, I'll turn my focus onto this bevel right here. And if you n notice, this is angled down. It's kind of angled like that. 
So this is the cutting edge and the shavings come down inside right there. So this edge right here is really the only thing I need to concern myself with. And I do a little bit of a cheat here so that I don't have to spend so much time working. Basically, I'm going to go through all the grits just like this. I'll take it down on the front. I'll kind of find that click-click angle. And I'll give it a few swipes or at least until I know that that front edge has a nice edge to it. If you notice, I'm keeping most of my pressure on the back side. I'm wearing that a little bit more. And I'm only occasionally kissing the front just to get that burr going on. Now, I will then go through all the grits doing the same exact thing, the medium and the fine. But when I get to the very last step on the fine, I'm going to do a little bit of cheat. So as I finish up the last grit, having gone all the way around on all of these and then just doing this top, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and they tell you you should never touch the center section because that, that's kind of the plain bottom. But it's kind of like doing the uh, ruler trick, that Charles Ward trick when you sharpen your plain blade. If I just kind of slightly edge this front corner right there, I find my flat and then I just drop it down a tad bit and just give it a few strokes on my highest grit. I'm not changing the angle that much, but it really takes off that burr and gives me a very nice edge. So once again, I find the total angle. I just drop it a tad bit, not but a few degrees, and just give it a light touch. There's a lot less metal to remove on this side than the other side, and now I have a very sharp edge. So let's take it to the drill press and see how I did. So I've got board clamped down, the bit in my drill press. I do have the speed a little bit high right now, but just for one demonstration, I'm just going to leave it. Uh, turn it on and let's see how we did. What should happen is those nice little points will give me a nice, clean grain breaking, cross cutting. So I come over here, there we go, a nice clean cross cut. I don't really do anything with that center spur, simply because it's never really moving that fast and I don't want to mess it up from getting in the dead center because it does kind of direct the direction of the drill bit going straight down. And if I go way farther, I should get nice shaving. And look at that. We're getting shaving. Fairly smooth. Come back up, look at the end result, and the bottom of that board is pretty smooth. So we got nice sharp edges, sharp blades, it's back to work. For today's bonus, I want to talk about Peter Follinsby. He writes the Joiner's uh, Notes, uh, a blog that's been out there for 10 years now. And he's one of the better, more entertaining writers in the blogosphere for, concerning woodworking. He's really into uh, green and he does a lot of research. In fact, he was a, one of the head guys over at Colonial Williamsburg doing tours daily and education and stuff like that. And the reason I got interested into him is he wrote a book, Make a Joint Stool from a Tree. And basically, he's going straight from a round and ending up with a stool in not that many steps. But the joinery is really well explained. He goes into the, a lot of details about how wood dries so that I could just go out and grab a log like I do with my wood turning and end up with furniture. And really, one of the books that kind of opened my eyes to a different realm of woodworking. So if you don't know who he is, look him up. Peter Fallenspeed. He's really into spoon carving, a lot of green, uh, tween, treen kind of woodworking, and a lot of really well-researched articles on how to make classical furniture straight from the tree.